style. Yeah, it's very exciting. So, Evan's continuing with his Unicorn Gundam Banshee Norn, and I am starting on a new kit, the Mobile Flat, which we'll kind of look at here, uh, from Turn A Gundam, which uh, Evan hasn't seen yet, but that's okay. <laughs> so, um, we'll be starting on that one, as we will start talking about the end of Original Gundam. We finally ah! watched all of that. Yeah, pretty exciting. Wow. I was impressed. Good. I was impressed. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm definitely interested in seeing more of this franchise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Glad to hear it. Yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty remarkable how much they actually do. How much actually happens in the show. Um, oh, that's right. oh, my goodness, in pieces. <laughs> A lot of good pieces there, though. Yeah, it's interesting how much there is... How much things change over the course of that show, too. I mean, the characters really go through a lot of... Ooh, decals. Decals. All the different changes. Yeah, characters really evolve and change. People who I thought would be terrible enemies turned out to not be so terrible and not be so enemy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And that, that yeah. human element really makes it uh, a, a different type of story. Yeah. Well, it's interesting comparing characters like, say, Rambo Rawl to characters like Shar Aznable. Hmm. Because they're both certainly fighting for Zeon. But uh, Shar's reasons are far more complicated than Rambo's. And Rambo is more of a career soldier who's doing what he's doing because that's what he's he's ordered to do. He's a very noble person in that sense. Whereas Shar, oh, he has something of a vendetta. Yeah, and, and I didn't realize it. I had suspicions mm. because he seemed to be kind of playing the fence more than I would have mm. expected from somebody mm -hmm. who was committed yeah. to uh, uh, that side. So I, I suspected there were some other motives, but I didn't realize until <laughs> near the end of the series mm -hmm. that... He was not too thrilled about uh, the leadership. No. And decided that he was going to extract uh, his pound of flesh for the, <laughs> the, the uh, I guess you would say, sins against him. Yeah. Uh, but for a while there, he was saying that he wasn't. Mm. He was past that. He was mm -hmm. now interested in something beyond that. Mm. But when it came down to it, he... <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's something that you know, some folks will quickly criticize Gundam for, this idea that uh, why, would you, why would anyone possibly allow someone like Shar to their military when he has that kind of a potential vendetta against things? But one of the things that you get a sense of over the course of the show is that Zeon doesn't have much of a choice. They don't have a lot of soldiers. They're almost at the level of sending in teenagers themselves. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, and Char has you know, proved himself as a, an extremely capable pilot. Um, you know, the, uh, the Red Comet, quite famously. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's, uh, you know, they, they were happy to have him in the sense that they figured, well, you know, hopefully he will know how to behave appropriately. And as we know... That was not quite the case. But yeah, he's uh, he's quite the quite the character. Part of the tricky part is remembering where I left off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got, those are the two shoulders, aren't they? Yeah, probably. You can usually tell because it goes sort of top down. So it's mm. usually head, um, well, actually not necessarily head, but it's usually sort of um, torso. And then sort of shoulders and arms and head, and then down to legs. Maybe. So, yeah. Uh, something like so that, yeah. Maybe. Let's see. So these. I'm going to have to close these out. Hmm. Where did I get to with these? And then, of course, all of the, the good guys who evolve over the course of the show, too. One of the things that really impressed me while watching it was the, um, 
in the very end when Whiteface is inside Abo Aku and they're defending themselves how Kai and Hayato grab machine guns and are defending to a level that you just would not have seen Kai doing. <laughs> no, he, 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 he developed a set. He sure did. <laughs> well, there's that, that beautiful but, but very painful episode with the, the, uh, the red-headed Irish spy. Oh. Uh, yeah. You know, Kai just can't get a break. Yeah, he, 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 here he, he finds a girl who he seems somewhat interested in, but he's still cautious. Mm-hmm. But she turns out to help him out in the end, but <laughs> she was just, uh, like many people in war scenarios, mm. trying to survive one way yeah. or another. So, so it really developed a, an empathy for the character, because you saw, well, she's in a bad situation just trying to, trying to survive, mm -hmm. and that's why she's become a spy. Right. Uh, but then she had younger siblings who were depending on her. Mm -hmm. And I felt bad that she disappears and never mm, comes back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, war's tough. No question. War is hell. Mm. And that goes there. I had a couple of goes pieces there, here that oh. I think. Oh, yeah. I think these pieces uh -huh. were supposed to go in somewhere. Probably. Yeah. Most things are meant to go somewhere. A place for everything. Everything is place. Everything in its place. Well, and also in, in that episode, Kai um, you know, makes that decision about where his loyalties lie. Because he could have just let that happen to Whiteface. Hmm. He could have just ignored it and kept on walking, so to and, speak. And he tries to stop uh, mm. uh, the the people who come to gather reconnaissance yeah. info, mm -hmm. he, he suspects them, and correctly. Yeah. <laughs> but he can't say anything, he, mm. because he, he didn't say anything when she stowed away, yeah. so if he does, he incriminates himself. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, I, I think uh, uh, Commander Bright uh, mm -hmm. asks him why, you know, he would think <laughs> something, and mm. he just sort of, was it, was it Commander Bright or somebody, somebody asked Bright. him, yeah. You know why? Why he thinks that scenario would be in play, and he really can't respond. Oh, yeah. I've got a stowaway <laughs> spy girl who, uh, yeah. She so he was he was stuck in that respect. He definitely was. Um, well, and you, it, it's a great example as you were saying of kind of that whole horrors of war theme of Gundam, which we see early on with the uh, the refugees as they go back to Earth. And uh, we see the mother and young son trying to find the uh, the town where they were from. <laughs> it's gone. It's, it's completely gone. <laughs> Nothing left. No. Um, and the wonderful thing about that episode is how they're helped by the, by Zeon. And indeed, yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> um, and they're very sympathetic, actually. And indeed, it is them. It is a Zeon turning around to help them. Which forces the Gundam to shoot them down. Hmm. Which is a wonderful little irony. In fact, Amaro make, uh, makes a point to say, "Look, just keep keep flying. Don't turn around. <laughs> I don't want to shoot you. Just keep flying. Keep going. Keep going." Yep. But uh, you know, he has to do it. And then that that terrible moment. Well, it's it, it's it's funny. They 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 make references to a uh, a some sort of a um, prisoner of war agreement mm, mm -hmm. that sometimes is followed and uh, occasionally is referred to as being ignored mm. uh, but the idea that there's at least the moon treaty yeah. and, the, and there's a DMZ area where, mm -hmm. where fighting is not allowed so, so it's not completely two-sided there's, there's mm. neutral parties who are somewhat involved mm -hmm. uh, by default they're human beings and <laughs> they're occupying space and, yep. uh, but when the when they got the Zeon uh, person of war, he mm. he makes a statement that uh, seems to be quite often the case. Mm. Um, we're just soldiers, uh, grunts on the front line, mm. um, following orders. So we really don't have as much choice in this uh, these decisions as you know. We're 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 just doing what they tell us. Yeah. 
Yeah. So in that in that sense, you develop a little bit more empathy for him. But then the, mm. again, as a prisoner of war, he makes every effort to escape <laughs> to. Uh, mess with the system mm -hmm. in place uh, to disrupt his captors. Mm -hmm. So even though there's a little bit of empathy, hey, he's still he's still a spy, he's still an enemy, he still can cause all sorts of damage. Yep. So that, yeah. that, that kind of dissolved some of my empathy <laughs> for him. So, oh yeah, he's still dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one of the neat things about that show is this idea that uh, you know, we're, kind of, we're going to show all sides of it, really. Um, the fact that you know, you want to be humane, but sometimes people take advantage of your of that of your being humane. Yeah. Um, and it, as you say, it is war, and there are people who are going to get hurt if you do too much with that. If you're too uh, um, too lenient, if you will. Being too soft on the enemy means the mm. enemy may eat your lunch. Totally. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, we get um, uh, kind of another side of that with um, with the introduction of Rambo Rawl, mm -hmm. where here Amaro has decided to run away and uh, you know take the Gundam with him, which is not a very smart decision. Um, I don't think you're going to get away with that one, Amaro. Yeah, that's... Yeah? Uh, <laughs> I was surprised. Okay, if you're going to run, run, but... You're taking their main defense <laughs> for all those people. What? Yeah. What are you thinking? Yeah, you oh, may be dear. a stud pilot, but <laughs> don't leave them. Def you know, they're not completely defenseless, but that's their main defense. There. Totally. Really. Yeah, that was. Uh, I wasn't really thinking that one through. Um, so that one wants to. I was. I was thinking. Okay, he's gonna be court martialed. <laughs> <laughs> but with the limited resources, there mm. was there was some lenience, and I guess as kids entering the battle, they mm. they gave him some concessions. True. Um, and he still gets punished, just yeah. not too severely. Well, <laughs> punished as far as they can. And yeah. part of his part of his behavior leads to troubles for the rest of the group that mm. uh, really don't turn out great. Mm -hmm. So... Definitely. Um, uh, finding, finding where I left off there. Peace, peace, <laughs> peace here. Here's that. Those pieces. Here's the arm of the flat. So we've got wow, you're already you're already armed. Well, you know, <laughs> sometimes these things come together pretty well. We have the articulating shoulder joint there, and the the hand. The interesting thing about this one is it comes with a, a very simple hand, but uh, multiple different options for hands. You can kind of swap those out Ooh. with a fist. Well, I suppose an open hand and the a hand gun just holder yes a slap just, down fist whack hand just pops out <laughs> yeah man. let's talk about that actually yeah the, the famous bright slap oh the sl bright slap yeah oh well bright bright had bright had something that this this show covered uh, certain realistic mm. aspects of people's lives that I I I haven't seen so much in other anime mm. we saw. An exhaustion uh, uh, yeah. that uh, just absolute physical, mental, psychological exhaustion exhibit yeah. itself in, in his life, and he had to yeah. he had to stop commanding for a little mm. while because of the stress mm -hmm. he, he wasn't prepared to, to handle. He was incapacitated basically as a leader, yeah. and uh, Bright has has had leadership thrust on him at a very mm. early stage in his career, mm -hmm. and it didn't let up pretty much. <laughs> no. And you know, obviously, as a, as you know, we see that he is a very, uh, shall we say, committed individual. Oh wow! Gosh. Incredibly so. He has to be reminded. You know, the guys up uh, doing all the data com stuff <laughs> who are helping you out, they they might need a break once in a while too. <laughs> These guys have been going at it. Yeah, <laughs> they can't keep up. Um, and so you know, you you take somebody with that personality, and then give them command. And you, we all remember how we were when we were young. We think we know everything. <laughs> Um, so I'm sure he, he thought he knew how to command a, a battleship, and he does his best. And, I mean, let's be honest, he does quite well. Yeah, for, for, for a first-time command. Mm -hmm. uh... you know, he hasn't been to any of the training on this. He hasn't had any of the advantages of any other, you know, commanders. And uh, so he, again, he does his best, but it is a lot for him. 
and he makes a lot of mistakes. It's one of the other nice things about Gundam is it shows that you can get involved in something and not do your best, and that can be okay too. Yeah. You know, you can kind of find your place. Right, certainly one of my favorite characters. There's a great moment, you know, quick spoiler alert for those watching, it's not a you know, plot spoiler. There's a moment in one of the later Gundam series where Bright is captaining another vessel with yet another new type who's, you know, um, getting frustrated and runs off and does something. And uh, one of the bridge crew looks at Bright and says, uh, are you sure it's okay that he can kind of yell at you and run off? <laughs> and he looks back and says, believe me, I've been here a lot of times. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've had to deal with this a lot. It'll be okay. Um... Because, uh, you know, emotional teenagers who are also manifesting the new evolution of mankind. Well, that was something that they kind of gradually rolled mm. out and then really started to reveal near the end of the mm. series. Yeah. The whole new type. We had some hints of it. Yeah. And I kind of wonder if one of the other people on the bridge doesn't have some of those new type characteristics. Oh. Um, uh, the brunette who takes care of... Uh, command and control communications. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she seems to have some insights that were bordering on almost ESP-ish. She sure does. Um, and there's some... Well, one of the interesting questions about the whole new type concept is the question of, you know, how does it manifest? Mm. Um, and something that they, they bring up in the show is this question of, okay, um, is this a a repeatable phenomenon, or is it something that's just kind of manifesting in different people in different ways? Hmm. Uh, very early on in the show, the characters have these insights about things. Well, well before they even mention new types, hmm. but suddenly Mirai will say, "Oh, you know, turning to the, she'll, she'll turn to the right," <laughs> and Bright will say, "Why'd you do that? I just, I just had a feeling." Had a feeling. Uh, a strong feeling. <laughs> yep. And so you realize that those abilities are starting to manifest. Um, and, yeah, well, and, and this is something that we've seen a lot in, of in science fiction, this idea of, of supermen, superhumans. The, 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 the powers that are innate becoming mm -hmm. manifest. Yeah, and what's interesting about Gundam is this idea that they manifest because the human race is moving to space. Mm. That there's something about living zero gravity, something about just the sheer exploratory nature of that. Hear that, everybody? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Donate to NASA. <laughs> totally. Um, <laughs> support your support your uh, efforts for space yeah. exploration. Exactly. Why to check to SpaceX? Spe SpaceX, yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, uh, which is kind of a neat idea. I idea. like the symmetry Ooh, here. Cool. Yeah, that, that makes it easier to find pieces. Totally. So, in, you know, a lot of anime series will have this idea of people who are, who have special powers and special abilities. What's neat in Gundam is this idea that it's not, you know, because you were given some special serum when you were 15. Mm. Um, it's because you, like a lot of other people, are getting these powers. And for you, it's manifesting in a specific way. Sort of an X-Men approach. Mm. Um, which gives it its own flavor. It, it, it makes the characters a little less, I don't know special yeah they, in that sense it, yeah. it, it allows you to identify with them because mm -hmm. yeah these 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 are these are people who were not expecting this kind of thing they exactly. didn't get bit by the radioactive <laughs> spider and suddenly you know they weren't hit by the cosmic rays that mm -hmm. suddenly changed them exactly so it's a very different different thing um, and it gives you a Somewhat more, um, I don't know, something that you can think about it a little bit more. This idea of how space might might actually change us as human a human race, and it's why you, and it's why you see obviously you know, someone like Shar would leap onto that for its military applications.